Hi guys, Togo here with a new video and we will talk about tanks in this video. Tanks in PvP, tanks in just every single interaction with another player and how tanks are actually stigmatized to uh, not play in PvP. And I want to talk about like the whole spectrum uh, about the people actually hating on tanks, why they are actually hated in PvP and how we can fix, but also how I can actually feel quite bad for the players that actually are focused about the players themselves playing a spec they love uh, instead of like guiding their uh, misguided hate towards Blizzard and towards them actually balancing those specs into PvP because those specs exist. It is not Voldemort. You, you can't speak the name of a tank specialization without getting like destroyed uh, like in harry potter so there is like no voldemort right you can actually talk about blood decays you can actually play blood decays in pvp so it's not like a mystery it is not like a taboo and it is actually seen as a taboo and that's actually the thing i want to talk about in, on reddit we have a subreddit which is called world of pvp and that subreddit actually prevents any talk about pvp and tanks together so if you talk about tanks in rbgs tanks in soul shuffle tanks in trees or twos your post will be flagged and taken down uh, justified or not if you talk about whining about tanks it will get in, it will get down if you're actually saying that tanks are actually all right in pvp it will get down it is literally a taboo word it become voldemort of world of warcraft and it actually is quite dumb and i feel like blizzard not doing a great job about tanks kind of fueled the flames towards tank specs but i think in general people kind of forget why the hate came i think people hate tanks because of the silly like mitigation they have the unkillable aspect generally in 1v1 it's pretty like impossible to kill someone that is a tank spec so i can understand that it's very frustrating although 2v2 3v3 even rbgs are not brackets where you have solo 1v1s so i feel like that situation should not occur um there were a lot of hates about tanks because they were actually replaced healers in the be beginning of dragonflight but also in the preseason whenever you're queued uh, up in soul shuffle you could actually land with a tank queue where you do not have a healer and you would end versus a garden druid which was actually busted in preseason then they got nerfed to the point where it's not really that played anymore in soul shuffle at all actually uh, although I think there there is some potential, I don't think like it's it's not busted anywhere near as the beginning of like Dragonflight, or at least like the preseason of Dragonflight, and um, people kind of hated it. And I was also one of them that actually hated to play versus Garden Druid, although it was like one of the easier counter spec because you do not hit the Garden Druid basically. If you hit the Garden Druid, a lot of like bramble damage, torn damage. Uh, that Rage of the Sleeper damage you would get on your face, you would literally like melt yourself. So you should just not touch the Garden Druid and go on the other target. But the Garden Druid actually did some good damage and also did a lot of like utility with Cyclones, off heals. So it was very annoying to deal with. And I can understand that people hated that moment. But since they actually got removed from the... Um, either healer or tank queues now it's just a it is just a healer queue or a protection paladin queue i don't feel like tanks are anywhere near a problem in pvp anymore um they, there is of course a few like cheesy builds but i think a lot of specs actually have that i think i got chased way more by devastation evokers uh beginning of season one with fire breath actually like rit literally one shotting a whole rbg group just because of one lucky crit i mean isn't that cheesy isn't that like obnoxious as well and if you're talking about obnoxious you're talking about the, the survivability aspect yes a tank is unfortunately very like very very sturdy and they actually do not die especially like for example if you're landing uh in a lobby where you cannot really kill a protection warrior for example physical damage dealers will have exceptional pain versus them but if you're like a caster, you can then go on the protection war and actually decimate them. 
but that's not really the question. The question is, why is it obnoxious? The problem is with protection borders and just in general, tanks are they have a lot of mitigation for themselves. So they are basically always bad targets in general, but some are better than others, depending on specs you are in the playing. Like for example, Affliction Warlocks can actually decimate like protection warriors or protection paladins. But again, I mean, and I understand that some specs cannot do that, but some specs can. Um, so that is the first problem. Second problem is uh, they're either useful, like to the, to, to the point where they are OP, or they are straight bad, which in my opinion is not really the case. I think a lot of tanks actually can work in PvP, but it's a lot of stigmatization towards that, and they do feel like they're useless and should not be part of PvP at all. I'm talking about two trees and social shuffle. In the RPGs, there will always be a spot for a tank, although I think, again, there's a lot of stigmatization even between the tank specs, because if you're not taking Vengeance Demon Hunter or a Garden Druid, you're basically trolling. Uh, which, again, I'm also ag against that because I think Protection Warriors, Blood Decays, are actually exceptional DPSs that can actually be in the DPS groups and in the team fights and do a lot of utility, which I think this game really lacks. I think they should take a note on other games. I actually went full PvP, for example, Dark Age of Camelot or Warhammer Online. Those games actually had tanks being tanks and actually be supports and also deal damage and not be obnoxious and actually needed in those groups to be able to thrive in PvP. You were not stacking tanks, but you were taking one tank or two or even more like one per group in Warhammer Online, for example, and actually get a lot of like those DPSs defended and then you have healers and then you can actually have healers that can go oom because you have tanks that can actually help the healers to support the dps which are the uh, michael jordan of world of warcraft blizzard now that's the first problem i think in general people are like very toxic towards tanks i think in general if you are now queuing in soul shuffle and you're playing a protection war protection paladin actually protection paladin i can maybe understand because you're kind of forced into a long queue and then you get a lobby which is not really optimal for a lot of specs i can understand that but Protection Warriors, uh, Garden Druids, Vengeance Demon Hunter, Brewmasters, they are just DPSs and people kind of vitriolically um, write messages to the people to actually say like the, 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 the bad words like off yourself or whatever uh, and also just uh, not do not play tanks in PvP kind of BS because again it is BS because it is in the game. It is not like something like a one cheese uh, spec that actually can climb just because of cheese. It is actually just a spec that actually exists. And I think it's kind of sad that people actually revert their gaze towards the players that actually play those tank specs instead of actually giving good feedback to Blizzard to how to change the tanks, those tanks to not be obnoxious in PvP for 99% of the player base but also make them useful to a certain extent where they can actually be played without being stigmatized by the player base. I think people would rather play with an Outlaw Rogue, which is clearly a D-tier spec, which I made even a video about to just make fun of. A tier tier spec, basically, they can just like slap a 50% buff towards the damage and it would still be very random. Uh, now that's a bit of an exaggeration, but they would slap a 15% or a 20% increase damage, it would still be not on the same level as, let's say, a, a Fury Warrior or a Arms Warrior or even a Wind Walker or even any melee that actually can do some good de de damage. Their control is maybe higher, but then why not take Assassination Rogue whenever they're actually, like, buffed? They do get more damage as well. So, people would rather play with an Auto Rogue, which is like an unfinished spec, basically. They kind of need to rework somehow some way in pvp and people can like it but it, it is still like a subpar spec and people would like literally hate the fact that they are playing with a protection warrior while while they actually deal some good damage good deal some good cc and have a lot of like mitigation towards your allies so people would rather play with details than with like more viable specs so again what's the point and whenever i'm actually actually asking people why do you hate tanks they're actually always stuck in the past they always talk about the f season one or they're talking bfa the two tank meta in rbgs 
uh, or they're talking about like Wrath of the Lich King one shot protection warriors. They're talking about a lot of stuff that doesn't even apply on this season. But they're talking about that. And I feel like people kind of forget why people take like play tanks. I'm going to be honest, I do play some Blood Decay. I do play some Protection War. I even sometimes play Protection Paladin. Also, quick tip, if you want to get really quickly your uh, 1800 Elite uh, gear, just play Protection Paladin. The MMR is actually busted. Uh, if you win like three or four games, you're already like very close to 1800. And then you have the big boys there. But since the MMR is a bit like skewed, and you're facing like 2k MMRs, you win just one or two rounds and you're there, right? You get like you, your what, 1800. You will have a lot of flames. People will hate you to play from for playing Protection Paladin. But trust me, it is worth the gear. But anyways, uh, you can play that. I played that as well. Uh, I want to try Garden Root as well. Right now, uh, people say that it's, it's bad in social fall, but I saw one very recently and actually did pretty well. Um, he was like a CC bot. He did some okay damage. And he did a lot of like those support kind of um, play style that, for example, an augmentation evoker would do. Um, but I saw that. Also saw Brewmaster actually crit for 200k uh, just a few days ago with Target Palm, which is quite impressive. So I want to test that as well. So there's a lot of things I want to test. And then you're going to say, but why are you playing tanks? It is not that good. It's like hated by everyone. I'm going to be honest. The gameplay is actually very fun. I do feel like tanks their gameplay, their keybinds, their, their keys that they're pressing, like for example, Bloody Case, they press Hard Strike, they press Marrow and Rand, they press Death Strike, they press Blood Boil, uh, I do press my CC abilities, I have Blood Drinker if I'm like from afar and I need to do some damage. It, it, it will drain some health to me as well. It's all like also un un, um, you can also move and parry, dodge, whatever, and use defensive abilities, which is also quite nice. Uh, you have Dancing Rune Weapon, which is a cool CD, to be honest. A one minute CD, 12 seconds, that mirrors your damage, uh, which is quite awesome. You have multiple pulls, you have a silence, you have an interrupt like any other DPS, you have Abomination Limb, you have a lot of like abilities to press also a lot of defenses but also a lot of offensives i like it i like the flavor if i'm playing bm hunter i feel like i'm playing a spec that has so little buttons compared to like let's say a blood dk but i can also talk about protection warrior i i even made a guide about it I've, the gameplay is very very responsive but also it makes sense a lot of buttons are like not it is actually used for a purpose. Revenge doesn't do, do too much damage, but you need to spend rage to get those outburst, violent outburst procs to get finally a good shield slam damage, for example, while you're bursting. Whatever you're going for an avatar, it gives you an opportunity to do shockwave for 50% more damage. You have your chill charge. Again, it's a gap closer, but also a great CC option, but also a great ability to press whenever you want to stun someone and kill someone with a lot of damage. You have your shield slam, you have your shield block to actually increase the damage of shield slam. You have multiple ways to play the, the game, actually, and I feel like I'm pressing more buttons than a Fury Warrior, for example. And all comes in mind with gameplay if gameplay is fun if gameplay works and if it actually isn't like d tier f tier like spec it can be played and can be enjoyed and you can climb with it is it very viable no i do lose all my protection warrior whenever i'm facing like double caster you think i'm going to have fun with it but i feel like it's the same for arms warrior or fury warrior but whenever i'm playing versus like the lobbies where i thrive in it I love hysterically because it does so much damage. It's insane sometimes how much like power I have through my abilities. Now, is it good design to have like a good burst and no consistent damage? No, and that's why I want to give feedback to Blizzard to actually again make those specs more in line with the PvP sensation they would like to see in PvP, like the kit and how the damage works. And rework it to make tanks actually like not obnoxious to a point where either it's, it's a one shot um, rotation or either it's useless or either it's obnoxious because it's unkillable or it is useless. I think there is like a middle point where they can actually be not very tanky but also have some good damage. Again, I think I'll take a lot 
uh, of an example with augmentation evoker which also gets a lot of hate let's let's not let's be real people just hate to play against it uh, people love to play with because it does a lot of support i would like to have those tank specs being turned into supports into uh, pvp i think that would be the good compromise for people to not hate uh, tanks in pvp because it would not be feeling like a tank you could kill like a support i would say for example if protection warrior was a support dps it could just do some good supporting like for example transferring damage to them like for example sacrifice does for a paladin and being able to have the gameplay that comes with a sword and board uh, spec and i think that's like something they should try for and work for and how flags work in warsong well if you actually don't have tanks you can also just remove the debuff and it will still be able to be killed because it's a DPS wearing it and not like a Garn Druid, which is actually not really killable after like five or six stacks, it becomes killable. But before that, it's actually very hard to retake a Garn Druid, for example, or Avengers Demon Hunter uh, to the same occasion. So I think if they actually turn those tanks into supports in PvP, so they remove the, the healing buff that you get, uh, you get like a um like for example the stamina buff that you get like the increase by 20 percent uh on some specs but also like they, i think they get like a modifier in pp uh where they get more health on, on their gear uh if they remove that and they keep the same health as like for example dps for a whole has has more health than let's say arms warrior they could get like the same kind of health as an unholy dk but they have like more support abilities their defensives are a bit nerfed, but their offensives are getting buffed. Their damage is a bit more consistent. Their burst is going down, for example. And I think it, it could work, but people would just have to work towards uh, not hating tanks and actually ac like acknowledge that tanks are also specs that can be played in PvP. Now, am I for tanks being OP in PvP? No, of course not. I don't want to see Garden Druids being able to... Uh, thorns they dam damage you because basically you you damage them at the right on other on the wrong wrong time for example like for example rage of the sleeper actually did 100 more damage um return damage on you so whenever you did like a uh death mark on assassination rogue on a garden road you basically just died because of rage of the sleeper i do not want that as well but i want like a middle ground where they keep their play style but it becomes like a support dps where they can do a lot of damage like a dps but they can also support their allies and then you can just turn some game modes again i think 3v3 is a bit too it's like something that they didn't really change since ages but i think we are now in an environment where we have more specs we have maybe more specs that are actually playable because of the support aspect that they get in a pvp so they are not tanks anymore they could become supports you can easily do a 4v4 with just one support, one healer, and two DPS. Yeah, I think that would be the meta. It would be also very fun to play uh, against and for. The healer will have a bit less pressure because of the support actually supporting your allies. So you can actually put some power towards the DPS of a healer without making them like heal bots because the damage is too spiky. And that will change the face of PvP and make it more readable and also more enjoyable for a lot of healers as well um i think that would be the future for me but again i don't think they're going to do that it would require way too much work and i think in general they are happy with 3v3 but it would be a, it would be cool to see like those tank specs turned in either dps specs or support uh, specs because i really feel like those builds and those uh, specs just in general plays very very nicely i think a brewmaster has also a quite interesting spec i think vengeance demon hunter are quite interesting i think yes they're very tanky but if you remove the tankiness it becomes like another spec for demon hunter to actually utilize in pvp and does some good damage and some supporting again the support dps aspect that still stays with their specs that would be actually very cool to see and i don't know if they are actually able to make things like these happen but i think it should be a first step to not like stigmatize people that actually play the specs that are actually available to the game and you should not be mad of people actually wanting to play their favorite specs of course if they are cheesy and they won't shot anything i understand that it is not fun to play against but can I remind you that Windwalker is also in the game and also can one-shot people? Do I need to remind you that you can also get destroyed by a fire mage while combust? 
Do I need to remind you that arcane mages are even more tanky than any tank spec in the game? Do I need to remind you that the Destruction Warlock, which I play, I do 150ks times 2 Chaos Bolts whenever I'm not the target. I'm often the target, but I still can do that, and I actually decimate people with that. Do I need to remind you that your Arms or your Fury Warrior actually does a lot of damage? Do I need to remind you that Void Decay does a lot of damage and actually is sometimes unhealable? Do I need to remind you that Frost Decay... Not in this state, but actually was like a grip into a blind, into double stun, into like one shot machine. Again, I'm not against Frost Decay. I think Frost Decay has a lot of problems with survivability and their spec doesn't really work. It needs also a rework. I play Frost Decay as well. But I want to remind you that any spec currently that is S tier, I'm not saying Frost Decay is S tier. Again, don't get me wrong. I'm saying like Windworks, for example, or uh, Arcane Mage. They are obnoxious. It, it doesn't take like the tank spec name to be OP because there are op other OP specs, OP classes out there. They actually thrive way more than those tank specs and they get a lot less hate. But those tank specs, just because they are tank, they get hate because they are tanks and they're not even like able to give a reasoning why they're actually hated or why they're actually bad for the game. They're just saying like, look, it's a tank spec. It deserves to be PvE. Come on, I mean, do, do we have already so little players in PvP and you want to chase the people that actually just want to play their favorite specs, for example. I'm not saying that Blood Decay and Protection Warriors are my favorite specs. I'm also not saying that I'm playing those specs only. So the people are writing this, like, you're saying that because you're playing Blood Decay and Protection Warrior. Yes, I play those specs because I do enjoy my time. I do enjoy World of Warcraft. I do enjoy to play multiple specs. My mains are Unholy Decays, Enhancement Shaman, Destruction Warlock. But I do enjoy those tanks. I think the PvP aspect and the gameplay and everything you have like in your hands are actually very fun. I just wish that people would just see the opportunity in those specs and make them truly good PvP specs that are actually not stigmatized. But anyways, that's a long ass video. I wanted to talk about it more in depth because I talked multiple times on live stream, talked multiple times on those guides, on those social for match videos. I think people should cut out the the um, the hate towards specs in a game where you're basically playing for fun. And uh, if tank specs are actually fun, like that's that's because Blizzard actually makes it fun. I think the the problem with Blizzard is actually the tuning part. I think yes, some tank specs are very badly tuned tuned uh, to the good way and also to the bad way. Uh, they could also be very useless. But that's not the uh, purpose. I think they should make every single spec as viable as possible, as playable as possible, and not as obnoxious as possible. I'm looking at you, Arcane Mages. I think it would be very cool to not see you as a tank, but more like a great damage dealer. I would even give you a second school. Uh, I don't know what other uh, school there is that is tied with Arcane. Give it to them, but make them less tanky. That's all I'm asking. But anyways, uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I really appreciate you. I know that I will have a lot of hate because of that video. I don't know how much views I will get for, for on this video, of course. But I, I do feel like I had to talk about uh, the Toast Tank Specs because I'm coming from a background that I'm not playing only World of Warcraft. I've also played World of War Warcraft since 2005. And there were multiple moments where tanks actually were viable to a certain extent. And... I also played Warhammer, I played Dark Age of Camelot, I even played Aeon Classic, I played Wildstar, I played multiple MMOs where PvP was somewhat good and Warhammer was actually excellent. Um, if it was already around, like I would say, a, not a private server, but like re a real server, like a, re like a remake of Warhammer Online, I would be playing it. I really think those tanks specs were very, very fun. Those tank classes were very, very fun. Um, the Knights of the Blazing Sun, for example, because it's a class on Warhammer Online, I think it's a very fun aspect with those auras, those abilities to support, but also deal a good amount of damage if you build it correctly. Um, I think it's one of those moments where you're thinking, look, those classes are fun and good and not goofy, not hated, but just there. And I would like them to actually implement all the specs of World of Warcraft. Protection Paladin, Protection Warrior, Blood DK, Vengeance Demon Hunter, Brewmaster Monks, 
Am I forgetting about something? Bl Bloody King? I don't know. There are not many tanks. Yeah. I think I've gotten through it. If they actually like implement those specs into PvP, not being ab like, able to be obnoxious, I think it would be a big W for World of Warcraft, for the players, and for everyone actually active on this game. But anyways, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And we'll catch you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.